whether you all understand it or not, uh, we really don't just draw messages from a hat. Uh, we don't just pick random things. I, I, I try to, to pray and seek the face of God, and I ask my leadership kind of where they think that we should go, and, and, uh, and we pray about things and, and see what God is, is laying on our hearts. And so you know, God has confirmed to me, and over the past, next couple of months, we will be uh, having teaching on uh, relationships and also worship. And so um, we're going to be talking about that and everything. And I'm excited about it. But this week, what happened is, is I'd originally planned on Tony either doing relationships or, um, or something like that. And, and so I began to study, and nothing was coming up. And I looked in the worship, and I studied and prayed, and, and just nothing felt right. And I'll be honest, I came in this morning, and I was pretty upset. I was in a bad mood. And uh, Donnie Bird come in, and me and him begin to talk and everything, and, and so we went to lunch, and he said, let's give them something encouraging, let's give them a, a fresh word, and I said, all right, and so we begin to talk and everything, so we came back, and as we studied, <coughs> this is the word that God laid on, on both of our hearts, and, and I know when he gave it to us that it was what we needed to talk about tonight, because it was just very evident, wasn't it, Don? I mean, it just, <coughs> bam, it just hit us like that. So tonight, what I'm going to talk to you about and come from is Psalms chapter 1. Say Psalms. Don't say it with a country accent like I do now. Come on, say Psalms, Psalms. chapter 1, verse 1 through 6. All right, and that's where we're going to be coming from. So if you have your Bibles tonight, I'm going to ask you to turn to Psalms chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 1, and we're going to read through 6. Psalms chapter 1, starting in verse 1, and we're going to read all the way through 6. Are you ready? All right, check this out. It says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. Or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on, uh, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, it prospers. And then verse 4 says, Not so the wicked. They are like chaff, like the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. That's a big chapter, huh? Yeah, all six verses. But check this out. How powerful are the first three? I mean, it's, it's a, that's a good word. That's a, that's a very powerful word. And so I'm going to break it down tonight and show you all. So we're going to start in Psalms chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 1. How many of you all uh, like to be blessed? Really, nobody, no, no more, than, more than that? I mean, I don't know about you all, but if, if I had a choice to be cursed or blessed, I'm going to pick blessed, right? Okay, all right. So we, we like to be blessed, and we would always choose to be blessed. We'd rather be blessed than wicked. We'd rather be righteous than wicked. We say that we'd rather have things in our life that are good and from God, but in all reality, our lives don't reflect it. So basically, there's two types of people that I'm going to talk to you about tonight. Now, the first one I'm going to tell you all about tonight, and the next one we're going to talk about next week. The first person we're going to talk about tonight, what tonight's emphasis on, is a blessed man. Can you say a blessed man? Yes. All right. Now, ladies, this is for you too, okay? But this is a blessed man. I'm going to tell you tonight what it takes to be a blessed man or a blessed woman, okay? So pay attention, and, uh, and let's go through here. We're going to look at Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. And, uh, and it, it reads like this. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk, say walk, walk. in the counsel of the wicked, or stand, say stand, stand, in the way of the sinners, or sit, say sit, sit. in the seat of the mockers. Now I want to hold this verse just for a second, and I want us to look at it, okay? Now if you have your Bibles, which I hope you do, I want you to outline this, underline it, circle it, highlight it, do something, and pay attention to it, because what I'm getting ready to tell you is very, very important. This is what the Lord spoke to us this afternoon, okay? Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of the sinners or sit in the seat of the mockers. The first word I want you to highlight is walk. Walk. You see, a lot of us, we, we, we start out walking. You start out walking and all of a sudden everything's going good and then something bad, somebody says something bad, Taylor, or they whisper something bad or they holler something bad in the hallway and all of a sudden it catches our ear and so then we're paying attention to, to them and what they have to say negative. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all know that place in school or that place at home 
where you never can, no matter what is going on, there's always something bad happening there. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Well, that's exactly what it's talking about. It says that, that a place where the wicked are, and so you're walking by, and it grabs your ear, it grabs your attention, and all of a sudden, it's got you. So when I stop walking, now I'm doing what? Now I'm standing. And so I went from walking to now I'm standing. So it says, a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Now, unfortunately, we live in a generation to where we listen to whatever we want to listen to. We watch things on TV we know we shouldn't be watching. We have immediate Internet access on our phones and, and all other sorts of devices. And so, therefore, whenever this stuff is so available to us, when we look at it, when we hear it, it grabs our attention. But in all reality, it's wicked. So now we are no longer walking with Jesus, but now we have come to a stop and now we're standing. And so then it says, or stand in the way of sinners. So what happens is you're walking and all of a sudden something gets your attention. So you stop and then you're standing still. And then something else happens. Now, if you find something interesting, let's say that you were to walk up to me and you were to find me interesting. And there was a seat available next to me. Would you want to sit down? Mm -hmm. You would, right? I would. I don't know about you guys, but if I can sit down and still stand up, I'm going to sit down. I like to sit down, you know. So you're going to come up, and you're going to sit down. Now, let me tell you something. Look at me. If you are sitting down in your walk with Christ, you are vulnerable. You are vulnerable. You are an easy target for sin to creep up on you and take you out. You are very, very vulnerable if you are sitting still. Now, if I'm walking, I can go to an immediate run, right? And if I'm standing, I can go to an immediate run. But if I'm sitting, there's a little bit more involved than going to an immediate run, especially when you're a big old boy like me, right? I mean, you got to get up and you have arthritis and everything else. You're like, oh, oh, mm, you know? And so the thing is, is when we're in a seated position, we are vulnerable to sin that will devour us. And can I tell you something about sin? Sin will eat you alive. Sin will absolutely deteriorate who you are in Christ if you allow it to. You see, we have what we are formed up in the body of Christ, and, and we are formed up. We say we follow Him, and we've made a decision to follow Him, and then all of a sudden, we allow, we allow sin to catch our ear. We hear something bad, a little gossip or a bad word or something that catches our ear, and the next thing we know, we're standing still, Standing with the same crowd, just like Peter did. That's exactly what happened with Peter when he denied Jesus. And then the next thing we know, we're sitting down with them. Again, what Peter did. How many? Uh, if you got your Bible, turn to Genesis 3. I want to show you this. Genesis chapter 3. How many of you all remember the story of Adam and Eve? All right, and check this out. I, I, I'm just backing it up with God's Word, okay? So you got the garden, and, and in the garden, God makes Adam and he makes Eve. And he says, all right, whatever you two do, you can do anything you want to do, but whatever you do, don't eat from this tree right here. Okay? So what's Eve do? I mean, straight to the tree, dude, like, gone. And so anyway, what she does, she's what? The Bible says she's walking through the garden. She sees this tree, and all of a sudden she hears the serpent whisper, and it catches her ear. Okay, Satan is speaking, and he catches her attention, and she stops. Then she's standing, and he says, eat. Now, I can only imagine when we eat, we typically sit down, right? So she sits down, and she eats this apple. Sin has entangled her. Then what does she do? She does what? She goes and she gets Adam. She brings somebody else into it. You see, sin is an easy process of an entangling somebody else. You get a little bit of sin in your life, and next thing you know, that sin is branching out, and it's in somebody else's life. That's why gossip is destroying churches and youth groups all across America. It's because they take what somebody says, something that's so hurtful, and it spreads to another person. And that seems cool, so we say it again, and it goes to another one. And it spreads, and it spreads, and it spreads. And that's exactly what happened. Eve had the opportunity 
to say no. But instead, she listened. She was walking. She heard Satan. She stopped. She turned around. She got involved. The next thing she knew, she was sitting with sin in her life. And then it, from there, she went and spread it. Where have you allowed sin to entangle you to now that you are spreading it to others? See, there's three types of situations. Either right now you are walking. You are walking the walk and talking the talk for Jesus. And off to the side are those people, and it's happening here at church, and it's happening at school, it's happening at home, it's happening out on the streets, and people are sitting there and they're whispering, hey, come to me, come be a part of this, come do this. And so you have the opportunity to keep walking or to stop. And when you stop, you're going to begin to stand. And when you stand, the next thing after stand is we are going to sit down because we become comfortable in an environment that we stand in. And when you stand around in sin, you'll become so comfortable but also so heavy burdened that you won't have a choice but to sit down in that sin. So the Bible says to do exactly the opposite of it. It says, blessed is the man who does what? Not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of the sinners, or sit in the seat of the mockers. Blessed is the man who does not do this. So if you are doing this right now, you are not living the blessed life that God wants to give you. Instead, you are falling into the wicked man. Not the blessed man, but the wicked man. You know what's so funny about sin? Sin not only deteriorates our lives, but it makes us a mess. And you know, Donnie, I've never seen anybody drink by their self. You know? Nobody just gets plastered by their self. That's no fun, is it? Yeah. Some of y'all shaking your head. What are you shaking your head for? All right? And some of you, some of you know about people. How many of y'all ever seen anybody get high by their self? Why would you get high by yourself? What good is that? Right? So sin likes to carry in packs. We like to double up on it. See, we like, to, we like to drink with somebody else and drink with a group. We like to, to party with a group and get high with a group. And so what happens is we end up taking this stuff and we spread it out to others because sin cannot carry it by itself alone. We have to carry it out. And that's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing. But I want, I want you to, to know this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it says, Bad company corrupts good character. And the problem with some of us in here tonight, and the reason you're in a mess you're in right now, and the reason your life is, is all up in this messed up situation, the reason things are going bad at home, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is because you are hanging out with the wrong people. The people that you're, you're putting yourself around is not what God intended for you. How many of you all in here tonight want to know where you're going to be in five years? Anybody want to know? Because I do. I want to know what my life's going to be in five years. I want to know if I'm going to have kids. I want to know where I'm going to be. Paige wants to know if we're even going to be married by the end. Now, there's a lot of people in here that want to know where you're going to be in five years, right? Well, here's the thing. If you want to know where you're going to be in five years, I can tell you tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready? I mean, because this ain't cutting it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you where you can be in five years and how you can tell where you'll be in five years. The people you hang around. The people you hang around. If you hang hanging around people that's bringing you down and getting drunk and getting high all the time, you're going to be in one of two places, either a jail cell or a cemetery. Take a choice. I mean, that's it. If you're hanging around some old boys talking all this stuff to you, trying to get all handsy and feely with you girls, I guarantee you where you're going to be, you're going to be a knocked up little mama, teenage mama. Oh, you can laugh all you want. You know it's true. And then you're going to be sitting there and get all these worries on you. And then you can be worrying about other things. Not only are you pregnant, then you got some kind of crazy STD and you're dying of AIDS and everything else. Yeah. See, the thing is, it's true. We laugh about it because we think it's all right in this generation. But the problem is, guys, is we can sit down and we can party all night long. And that's cool right now. But in five more years, you keep on partying, it's going to accumulate. And there's a good chance I'm going to be picking you up out of, a, out of a vehicle one night because you just wrapped yourself around a tree. You see, the thing is, is, is we can all, Jerry, we can live our lives the way God intended them to, which is to be blessed, or we can live our lives the way we want to, Mike, and, and allow Satan to interfere 
and we can have them all jacked up. See, but God intends for us to have a good life and to be blessed. So go to verse 2. And in verse 2 it says this. It says, but who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Now what is meditation? No, I'm not talking about All right. I'm, I'm talking about what, what does meditate mean? Think about it, get in a quiet place and listen. Pray on it. <laughs> yoga. You can meditate in yoga if you can get in the position yoga can get you in. I do good to hold myself on one foot, man. That's a job for me right there. So check this out. He says that we are to meditate on the law. Now, what law is he talking about? Is he talking about a speeding, a speeding law? Is he talking about a, a speed limit? He's talking about the Bible. All right, Johnny. So he says we are to meditate on day and night. So does that mean that everywhere you guys go, are you listening or are you going to miss it? Okay, well, it don't sound like it. So, so anyway, if you're walking around, does this mean he wants you to walk around constantly with the Bible and go, mm, Teacher, I'd love to listen to you right now, but I'm meditating on God's Word day and night. Mom, I'll clean my room later, but right now I'm meditating on God's Word day and night. Is that what he means? Uh-uh. No. See, what he means is this. He wants us to know God's Word so much that we can quote things like John 3.16. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he wants us to know scripture that it says God's word will not return void and, and that he is for us and not against us. And he leads us into green pastures and protects us from our enemies. You see, we're, anybody can open a Bible and read it, but to know God's word is to meditate on it daily. Guys, I'm telling you, if you want to see God do something in your life, you begin to read his word and to trust in his word and you watch what he does. Because when you read God's word, you read his promises. And with his promises, you will develop life. And where there is life, it cannot die. And the reason some of your lives are so miserable right now is because there's nothing alive in them. Everything around you is dead. So he says to delight in his word, not to delight in food, not to delight in girls, not to delight in boys, not to delight in relationships, all 5,000 of them you have a week. God didn't say to delight in Facebook or Twitter or cell phones or anything else. He says to delight in his word and to let his word fill you. Let his word fill you. Because Gary, if you know what God says about you and what he says for you, then you know it, man. When you have it right here, you don't have to call on anybody else to share Jesus with somebody. See, what I love is somebody sharing Jesus with somebody, and they're like, Danny, come here. What? I, 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 don't, I don't know what to do. I'm like, how do you not know what to do? Tell them Jesus loves them, and uh, he'll forgive them. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, it's not real sin. It's not real hard. All you got to do is say, Jesus loves you. He died for you. Ask for forgiveness of your sins. Let him come into your life, AJ, and save you. Make a difference in your life so we're not cutting up during Wednesday night. And then, then, once he's made such a difference in our lives, then we live for him and we allow ourselves to be filled with his word, then everything else won't matter. Father God, Lord, for that spirit of distraction that is in this room, Lord, I pray that it would flee from here. It is not welcomed here. And Father God, I pray that each and every person under the sound of my voice, Father God, would hear your word. Lord, let them know that I'm not speaking it, but this is you speaking through me. And so, Father God, please, Lord, please. Father God, I pray that anyone who is not listening, anybody who's cutting up and laughing and making noise, that Father God, that they would just become still. And that, Lord, that your spirit would fall upon this place, Lord, so that we could focus on you and your word. We ask all this in your name. Amen. See, sometimes you got to stop and do that because the spirit, bad spirits can work against you. It's not a joke. All right, so let's go to verse 3. We have verse 2. Now we have verse 3. And this is what verse 3 says. It says, He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, it prospers. All right? Now remember, this is to be a blessed man. He is telling us what we need to do to be a blessed man. So the first thing says not to what? Walk, stand, 
or sit with anybody that's messing around with sin. So basically, it's telling you to live your lives the way you need to live them and not live them like the world. The second thing we're told to do is to meditate on His Word or to get in His Word and know His Word with all of our hearts and to spend time uh, learning more and growing in Him. And the third thing He tells us to do is He says, He is like a tree planted by streams. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I think about a tree, I think about something strong, mighty, and it can withstand storms. So if you are a strong tree that can withstand a storm, nothing can knock you down. All the bad stuff can come against you all day long, but you're going to stand strong. I think about a tree when I think uh, when I think like that. And so anyway, we think about a tree standing by a stream of water. And what do we think of then? Fish. Okay. I think about living water. And so what I want you guys to do just real quick is just shut your eyes. Nobody moving around, nobody talking, nobody cutting up, giggling, carrying on. That's you all too. I just want you to get quiet and just for a minute just allow God to speak to you. And I want you to think about what I'm getting ready to describe to you. I want you to think about this big tree, this huge tree. I'm talking dude is a honker, like big, gigantic. And then all of a sudden, you see this tree and it's, it's right beside this stream, this beautiful stream. And you can hear the water trickling down the stream. And then you think about that. You think about how strong this tree is. And so you watch this tree. And on this tree develops this fruit, this piece of fruit. And man, that fruit looks good. Now think about your, your, your favorite fruit. And whatever that fruit is, even if it's a watermelon, don't even grow on a tree. I want you to think about that watermelon hanging from that tree, and that fruit looks good. And so as that fruit falls, it does something. It hits the ground, and it makes an effect where? All the way around it. Now open your eyes, and I want you to think about this. The Bible tells us that the way we are to live a blessed life is to be like a tree planted by a stream of living water that can drop and bear fruit. Check this out. If we are a tree, we are strong in Christ. We realize who we are, Cody. We realize who God made us to be. Not only do we do that, but we are planted by the stream of water. Now, water is the living water, which is Jesus Christ. And the only way we're ever going to make it in life is through Him. Now, I'll tell you something. I'm going to help you guys out for whoever this applies to tonight. I understand that not everybody in here is going to let this apply to your life. But can I tell you something that will help you out in the long run? If you trust in Jesus now and truly trust Him, it will help you out in the long run in so many ways. If I had the faith when I was your age that I have now, oh, the troubles I would have been facing. So it says to be a solid tree who trusts in the word, who lives by the living water of Jesus Christ and yields fruit. Now the fruit it's talking about are good things in your life. Now I want you to think about this. If you are yielding good things in your life, you are yielding fruits of the spirit. Not bad things. You're not putting people down. You're not making fun of people. You're not bullying people and pushing them down at church and at school and everywhere else. You're not laughing at them. You're not calling them names. You're not smoking pot. You're not doing pills. You're not out getting drunk. You're not messing around with some boy. You're not, you're not doing all this stuff. But instead, you've got things in your life that are good, things that are developing into others. So when other people look at you, they say, you know what? I see Jesus in them. And they've got so much Jesus in them, I desire to be like them. I think I ask uh, I asked you guys a while back, when was the last time that God marveled at you? When was the last time he was like, wow, Casey, she's my girl. Yeah. You know, when was the last time he did that? When was the last time he went, AJ, you're my son. Man, I'm so proud of you. When was the last time that God did that for you? Because for a lot of us, most of the time, I would, I would, I would dare say that he's probably sitting there going, not again. Why aren't they listening? Why, why don't they see? Why are they running from me? You see, we are supposed to live a blessed life, Tony. And so many people in here right now, 
you're so busy dealing with depression and suicidal thoughts and hatred and anger and all this other junk in your life that God doesn't want you to deal with. He says to be a blessed man is to stay away from that junk. He says to get in his word and, and learn more about his heart and how much he loves you. He says the third thing is to be like a tree planted by a stream of water. Be solid and always realize that the only thing that's going to get you through life is not me, it's not a church, it's not a government, but it's only through Jesus Christ. He is the only thing that will ever be able to pull you off of. Father God, Lord, just take this word and push it forward. Lord, you tell us in your word that it will not return void. Lord, you tell us in your word that you are for us, not against us. You intend for us to be the head and not the tail. God, you tell us in your word that you died for us because you loved us, even when we were still a wreck in our lives. Lord, you tell us that if we hang around people who, de who demean us and put us down, that, Father God, eventually we will act like that. Lord, you tell us to stay away from it. God, you tell us how much you love us. You say that our hairs are numbered and, and that you know the number. God, you tell us that you've prepared a place for us to go, but only if we'll accept it. Father God, you tell us all these things, but most of us don't receive it. So, Father God, I pray that tonight someone in here would receive this blessing on how to be a blessed man and a blessed woman. And that, Lord, that they would allow their lives to be so full of the words that were spoken into them tonight that they need to stay away from all that mess in their life, anything that is causing them to stumble. And, Lord, I pray that they would get more active in reading your word and seeking your face. And, Father God, I pray most of all that they would become like a solid tree that does not move and it will not be shaken no matter how hard the winds of life blow. And, Father God, most of all and most importantly, may each and every one of these young ladies and these young men in this room tonight understand that you are the living water and you are the only thing that will ever get them through life. They can try drugs. They can try premarital sex. They can do whatever they want to, but none of it's going to work. It may last for a little while, Lord, but we all know that it's going to fail because I can stand up here along with many other adults and testify all night long about your graciousness and your goodness and what you've done for me. So, Father God, I pray right now, Lord, that your spirit would move on these young people and that, Father God, that you would just love on them in a way you haven't ever done it before. And, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We ask all of this in your name.